everybody, it's Jenny from MedEd again. So the next procedure I'd like to go over with you is taking a resident's blood pressure. Now, blood pressure can be a little tricky, so we do have to kind of practice that. For your state test, if you get that procedure as a skill, you're going to have to do it manually. So if you don't have a blood pressure cuff, you might want to get one and practice for your test. So first, I just want to kind of go over the equipment before I go over the procedure. First is the stethoscope. This is what we use to listen to the blood pressure. Ear pieces go in your ears, and then this big round part here is called the diaphragm. So some of your stethoscopes are going to have a diaphragm, and some of them are going to have what we call a bell. Don't worry about that for now. For right now, just focus on this part, the diaphragm, the bigger part. This is a single stethoscope. If you get the skill for the state test, they have what they call a teaching stethoscope, which is this right here. So you get a set of ears, the state tester gets a set of ears, and everybody hears the same thing through the diaphragm. So that's why I said if you've never taken blood pressure before, you might want to practice before your test. Now I'm going to step a little closer to the camera so I can show you the sigmal manometer gauge. So the whole cup is called a sigmal manometer cup, and the gauge itself is called a sigmal manometer gauge. When you're doing a blood pressure on a manual cup like this, the numbers are going to be even numbers. So you're not going to get a blood pressure reading of 115 over 61 because there's no buys, there's no ones. So it starts down here at 20. All the small lines are twos and then the long lines are tens. So it starts at 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, all the way up to 300. So with a manual cup, all even numbers. And then, some type of alcohol swab or antiseptic wipe. Got to clean the ear pieces and you need to clean the diaphragm. If one of your residents has scabies and you don't clean the diaphragm in between residents, not only are you going to have it, but your whole facility is going to have it. So for the procedure, blood pressure. Do your initial steps. Ask your nurse about your resident's needs, abilities, and limitations. Knock on the door, wait for permission. Call them by the name they prefer. Identify yourself by name and title. Explain what you're going to do. Find and gather your supplies, so your stethoscope, your blood pressure cuff, and your alcohol swab. Close the curtain drapes and doors. Wash your hands where gloves is needed for body fluids, and use good body mechanics. So you want to get your resident comfortable. Expose the arm. You're going to take the blood pressure on. You're going to wrap the sigmal manometer cuff around the upper unaffected arm one to two inches above the elbow. So do not put the edge of the cuff, for example, if my sleeve was the cuff. You do not want to put the edge of the cuff right on the brachial artery because then you have to push the diaphragm up underneath that cuff and we're getting ready to apply pressure. So you want the cuff edge about one to two inches above the brachial artery. Most of your cuffs have a little arrow. You want the arrow above the brachial artery, one to two inches. to the right to tighten, we need to clean 
our equipment. So take your alcohol swab, clean your earpieces, and make sure you clean the diaphragm. The earpieces go into your ears, and some of these stethoscopes have adjustable earpieces. You can turn them in, turn them out, but you just want to make sure that when you put the stethoscope in your ears, those earpieces are sunk down into your ears, kind of like earbuds. That way it helps block out all that sound on the outside. Place the diaphragm over the brachial artery so the stethoscope you hold with one hand and the dial you work with the other. Ask the resident if they know what their blood pressure is. If they know their blood pressure, you're going to go 20 above the systolic reading. So if you've been taking care of Mrs. Smith and her blood pressure is consistently 120 over 80 every time you take it, you go 20 above, so you would pump up to 140. If the blood pressure is unknown, pump up to 160. Now I can't let you listen into my stethoscope because technology is good, but we're not quite that advanced yet. But what you're going to do is pump this up to 160. And when you loosen it to the left, you're going to drop this needle on the cuff about one to two lines a second. So I'm going to pretend like I'm the stethoscope, and I'm going to demonstrate what you are going to hear through this. If the blood pressure was 120 over 80, now everybody's got a different blood pressure, but if her blood pressure was 120 over 80, when I pump it up to 160, I'm not going to hear any heartbeats, and you shouldn't. Slowly release the bulb until you hear the first sound. So if her blood pressure is 120 over 80, I'm going to hear the first sound at 120. Slowly release the dial until the sound disappears. If her blood pressure is 120 over 80, the sound's going to disappear at 80. So I'm going to pretend that you have the stethoscope in, and this is what it'll sound like. So when we start at 160, we're not going to hear anything. Place it over, pump it up to 160, and listen for the heartbeat to start, then stop. So I'm letting it drop, and then I hear, boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Completely deflate the cuff. Remove the cuff. And you document a blood pressure like a fraction. So you're going to have a top number, which for this scenario would be 120, slash 80 for the bottom number. The systolic blood pressure is how hard the heart is beating. The diastolic pressure is the pressure of the heart when it's relaxing. Report unusual findings to your nurse. Steve's right here. Thank you.